we've had like a lot of talks uh, on some of the technical work that's been happening at OpenAI. Uh, this talk is going to be pretty introductory because I guess I'm talking about what is quite a new field, but um, as Ashley said at the beginning, it's one of the areas that OpenAI uh, focuses on. Uh, so this is uh, a talk on AI policy, um, and I'm a member of the uh, policy team here. Cool. I realize now that this picture is slightly unfortunate because I'm gonna give you some things that look like they're being produced by a neural net, uh, when in fact this is just an image because uh, I thought it looked nice. Um, so the core claims uh, behind why we might want something like AI policy to exist in the world are really simple. Basically, AI has the potential to be beneficial. Uh, hopefully we can kind of agree with this. We've had lots of talks showing how excellent AI can be and things that it can be applied to. Um, AI also has the potential to be harmful, um, so I'll talk a little bit about this uh, in the next slide. Um, but you know, we hear a lot of stories about you know systems that just don't behave the way that their creators intended to when they're deployed in the world. Um, systems that can be like taken over by like um, people who uh, want to use them for malicious purposes. And so anything that has this like ability to do great things in the world can also be either misused or lead to accidents. We can do things that increase the likelihood the AI will be beneficial, uh, so hopefully that's also fairly, uh, fairly agreed upon. But also that this includes making sure that the environment uh, that AI is developed in uh, is uh, one that incentivizes responsible development. So there are like non-technical things that we can do to make sure that AI uh, is beneficial. So I think these are all like really simple, and this kind of leads to this idea that we should be doing some work in like non-technical fields just to make sure that um, AI is developed uh, responsibly and well. So just to like kind of reiterate the claims of the previous slide, um, the potential benefits of AI are obviously kind of huge, and I feel like to this audience I don't really need to sell them, but we can go over them. Um, so you know, like language models provide like the ability potentially to assist with uh, writing and other day-to-day -day tasks. Um, we can see that uh, we can apply them to like large complex pro problems like climate change potentially. Um, this is the kind of like hope for things like uh, large-scale ML. We might be able to enable like innovations in healthcare and education, so we might be able to use them for things like diagnosis or finding new treatments for diseases. Um, and finally, they might drive the kind of economic growth that would reduce the need to do kind of like uh, work that people don't find fulfilling. I think this is probably like kind of controversial. You know, this is one thing that's like highly debated in AI ethics, but you know, I will like defend it. I've done lots of unfulfilling work in my life, and if someone could just pay me to not do that, I would have taken that. So, okay. Potential harms, um, you know, like language models uh, of the same sort could be used to like misinform people um, by malicious actors. You know, there are concerns about like facial recognition as it improves and uh, privacy. Um, people are concerned about automation and unemployment if it's not dealt with well. Like, does this just lead to like massive uh, unfairness and inequity? Uh, then people are also worried about things like decision making and bias. You know, so we already see in like California that you know there's ML systems being used for things like. Um, decisions about bail being set, but also historically we've used a lot of systems for things like whether someone gets credit, um, you know, so whether your loan is approved or not. Um, given that there's probably like a huge amount of bias in the data and that we don't like know yet how to like completely eliminate that, this could be really bad and it could kind of uh, increase sort of systemic inequity in society, so that's bad. We're also worried about like AI weapons and global security. Um, finally, just like general misalignment of future AI systems. You know, a lot of these are just like very kind of like uh, classic examples of things that people are thinking about now, but this should just, we, can, we could kind of expect this to be the, the sort of problems that we just see on an ongoing basis in the future as systems get more powerful. So I don't think AI is like any different from many other technologies in, in at least some respects here. Um, you know, so like how do we avoid building things that are harmful? Like, don't the same kind of worries just apply to, like, the, avi the aviation industry? You know, we, like, planes can also be taken over by terrorists. Planes can be built badly and, like, lead to accidents. Um, the same is true of, like, cars or pharmaceuticals or, like, many other technology with the potential to do good. It can end up, you know, there can be accidents. It can be harmful. So in other industries, we invest in safety. We invest in reducing accidents. We invest in security. Um, so that's, like, reducing uh, misuse potential. And um, we also invest in social impact. So in the case of aviation, you know, we now are concerned about things like the impact that uh, flying might have on the climate. This is like the kind of third um, uh, sort of thing that people invest in a lot. Um, but all of this is like very costly. Um, so this is just, you know, a kind of intro to like one way in which uh, we might face problems here. 
Uh, I'm gonna use a baking analogy, mainly because I was trying to think of a different one, and I had used this one previously, and I just couldn't think of a better one. So the idea is, imagine you've got a competition, and like the nice thing about baking competitions, um, maybe I just like watch too many of them, <laughs> is that like you care both about like the quality of what you're what you're creating, and also about how long it takes to create it. Um, and so like imagine a baking competition where you can just take as much time as you want, and you're just going to be judged on the results. So there's no race, like you don't need to hurry. You're just going to focus purely on the quality of the thing that you're creating. Um, but then you introduce this terrible thing, which is like a time constraint. Or even worse, you can imagine you make it a race. Like the first person to develop like the, the, the bake just gets like a bunch of extra points. Um, and in that case, you're going to be like, well, I'll trade off some of the quality just to like get this thing done faster. Um, so you, you, you trade off some quality for increased speed. And basically, we can expect something similar to happen with things like uh, investment in areas like uh, the areas that I talked about in the previous slide, where it's like, it might be that I would want to just like continue investing and in making sure that my system is secure essentially like forever. I just never want someone to misuse this system. So if I was given like 100 years, I would just keep working on it. But ultimately, I need to produce something. I do need to put something out into the world. And the concern that we might have is that competition could kind of like drive down the incentive to like invest that much in security. So this, again, happens across lots of other industries. This is like not, you know, isolated to AI. And so the, there's a question of like, what happens here? Um, so how do we ensure that companies invest in things like safety? Uh, I'm going to argue that there are four things. Um, if you, some of the literature might not mention this one, but I think it's really important. Um, so, like the first one is ethics. Uh, people in companies are surprisingly against being evil. So that's good. That's important. I think this gets not talked about enough. Sometimes we talk like, like the people at companies would just be totally happy turning up at like 9 a.m. to build something that would like cause a bunch of people harm. Um, and I just don't think that people think like that. Um, people are, you know. I have fundamental faith in humanity. I think we're all deeply good. Um, but it's really great to like align your incentives um, with your ethical beliefs. And so regulation is obviously one other component uh, that's there to do that. You know, so we create these regulations and industry norms to basically make sure that like, if you're like building planes and you're competing with your competitor, you still just have to make your planes, like you have to establish that they, that they reach some of the tripped over all of those words. You have to establish that they reach some level of safety, and that's what uh, regulation is there for. There's also liability law, um, so companies have to compensate who are harmed by failures. This is like another thing that's uh, driving that incentive to make sure your bake is like, you know, not going to kill the judges. Um, is the, 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 well, yeah, everyone will be mad at you, and also you'll have to pay a huge amount of money. Um, and finally, the market. You know, people just want to buy safe products from companies with good reputations. Um, so no one is going to buy your bake if they're like, hang on, I, like, I, I just saw you drop it on the floor before you put it into the oven. Like, uh, <laughs> I will pay nothing for this. So these are the, like four standard kind of mechanisms that I think are used to like, ensure that safety is like pretty high, even in the cases of competition between companies um, in other domains, you know, like aviation and pharmaceuticals. So where are we with this on AI? Um, I like to be kind of optimistic about the ethics. I think that like coming to a technology company and seeing the kind of tech industry, I've actually been surprised by the degree to which people are very ethically engaged. Um, you know, engineers care about what they're building. They see that it's important. They generally want it to be good. Um, so this is more like a personal kind of judgment on this, where I'm like, actually, this is a very ethically engaged industry, and that's like really great. And I hope that continues and increases. With regulation, currently there aren't that many industry-specific regulations, um, and I missed an S there, um, but speed and complexity make uh, regulation more difficult. Um, so the idea is that regulation is like very good when there's not an information asymmetry between the regulator and the entity being regulated. It works uh, much less well when there is a big information asymmetry there, and I think in the case of ML, that does kind of exist. It's very hard to both keep up with like, I think for regulators, keeping up with like contemporary ML work is really hard and also the pace is like really fast. So this makes it actually quite difficult as an area to build like very good regulation in. Liability law is another thing where it's just like a big question mark because like for ML accidents and misuse, in some cases it's just unclear what like existing law would say. You know, so if you build a model and it harms someone because it turns out that there was like data in the model that was biased and that results in like a loan being denied to someone, like 
who are you li who who is like liable for like that harm that is generated and you get like easier and harder cases of this but essentially like a lot of the kind of uh i think that like ai and uh i think that like contemporary ai like actually presents like a lot of problems with like liability law um that will hopefully get like sorted out but you know in some cases i just think this is like unclear finally like market mechanisms people just need to know how safe things are for market me mechanisms to work well um, and, you know, in the case of like a plane, for example, I don't like know how safe my planes are. I don't like go and look up the specs. I don't have like the kind of engineering background that would like let me actually evaluate, say, a new plane for how safe it is. I just have to trust that someone who does know this is evaluating how safe those planes are because there's this big information gap between me and the, and the engineers. And like, this is also why I think we shouldn't necessarily expect mar market mechanisms to kind of do all of the work with AI. So. This is to kind of like lead up to this, like uh, to show that there's like a broader problem here. And I think it also applies in the case of AI. Uh, so to bring in sort of a contemporary example, like recently in the news, there's been like concern, you know, like uh, vaping is this kind of like new technology that is currently like kind of not under the purview of uh, like the FDA or at least like generally not uh, heavily regulated. And now there's concern that it might be like one of the kind of, uh, it might be causing like uh, pretty serious illnesses in people like across the US. And I want to like, I think this is like a part of a more broad pattern that happens a lot in industries. And um, so I want to call this like the reactive route to safety. So basically a company does the thing, the thing harms people, this is kind of like what you don't want on your company motto. Um, <laughs> do the thing, the thing harms people. <laughs> people stop buying it. <laughs> people sue for damages. Regulators start to regulate it. Uh, this would be like <laughs> really uninspiring as your like company motto. <laughs> um, and so like, but this is actually a very common like route to, route to making things more safe. Um, you start out and there's just like no one who's like there to make sure that this thing like goes well and so it's just up to like the pe people buy it um they're harmed they sue regulators get really interested because suddenly your product is clearly harming people um so is this a good route for ai so i'm like reasons against hope i like the laugh because i'm like <laughs> hopefully that means people agree like no this would be terrible um but i'm just like well one reason like just to give like the additional things of like obviously that's kind of a bad way to do things anyway ai systems are, are like can often be quite broadly deployed almost immediately so it's not like you just have some small number of people who are consuming your product who could be harmed by it in the way that like a small bakery might instead you could have a system where you're like i've built a system for determining whether someone should get a loan in principle like almost every bank in the us could use that the next day um, and that's like a, the, like the, the potential for like widespread deployment uh, makes it quite different from like technologies where you just have like a really small or like any product where you have just like a small base of people. They have like the potential for a really high impact. The loan system that I just talked about could basically like um, like could in principle like really damage the lives of a lot of people. Like apply that to things like bail systems as well, which we're already seeing, and even more so with things like um, or potentially with things like misinformation systems. Finally, in a lot of cases, it's just d difficult to attribute the harms. And um, if you have something that's like spreading a huge amount of misinformation, for example, um, and you can't directly attribute it to something that was released, this is kind of concerning because it's not like this route might work. This route actually like requires you to be able to see who caused the harm. Um, and whenever that's like not visible, um, you just don't expect this to actually lead to like good regulation. So finally, um, I just want to say, I think there are alternatives to this kind of reactive, uh, break things per first approach uh, in AI. And this is hopefully where like a lot of policy work can be useful. Cool. So just to give a kind of like brief overview of like policy work at OpenAI. Um, so I think I'm going to start with like the policy team goals, just to give you a sense of what we do. So we want to increase the ability of society to deal with these with increasingly advanced uh, AI technology, both through like information and also through like pointing out mechanisms that uh, can make sure that technology is like safe and secure and that it does have like a good social impact. We conduct research into like long term issues related to AI and AGI. So we're interested in what happens when these systems become more powerful. So not merely reacting to systems that already exist, but trying to kind of anticipate what might happen in the future. Um, what might happen as systems get more powerful and like the kind of policy problems and ethical problems that would come up then. Finally, we just like help OpenAI um, to uh, coordinate with other AI developers, civil society, policymakers, etc. 
around this kind of like increasingly advanced technology. So in some ways trying to break down those information asymmetries that exist and that can cause all of these problems. So just to give a couple of examples of recent work from the, from the team to see the kind of thing that we do. Um, we released a report recently um, with others uh, on publication norms and release strategies in ML. So some of you will know about like the GPT-2 language release and the decision to do staged release. So we discussed this uh, in the recent report. Um, we also discussed other things like uh, the potential for bias in language models and some of the like uh, potential kind of social impacts of large language models going forward. Uh, we also uh, wrote this uh, piece on cooperation and responsible AI development. So this is related to the things that I talked about earlier about the potential for like competition to, to push this kind of like uh, this bar for safety uh, too low um, and some of the mechanisms that can be used to help make sure that that like bar for safety is raised again. Finally, since this is kind of an, introdu an introduction to this whole field, which is like kind of new and emerging field, uh, here are examples of questions that I think are really interesting and broad, but can be like brought down to these like very specific applicable questions. So what does it mean for AI systems to be safe, secure and beneficial and how can we measure this? This includes like a lot of traditional AI ethics work, um, like my background is in ethics. Um, and so a lot of these questions about like how you make a system fair and what it means for a system to be fair. I, th I would think of that as falling under the what is it for a system to be socially beneficial? Um, and I think that work is really interesting. Uh, and I do think that there's just like this broad family of things uh, that are like policy and ethics and governance. Um, I don't think of these as like uh, separate enterprises. And so this is an example of why. What are ways that AI systems could be developed uh, that could be particularly beneficial or harmful? Um, again, trying to like anticipate future systems and ways that we might just not expect them to be harmful and they are. And I think we see this with existing technology. It's like maybe it's like Trying to anticipate the impact that technology will have is really hard, but like given the huge impact that technology is now having, I think like trying to do some of that research in advance is worthwhile. Finally, what can industry policymakers and individuals do to ensure that AI is developed responsibly? Um, this relates to a lot of the things that I talked about earlier. Um, but yeah, like uh, what kind of interventions can we have now? Uh, are there like uh, ways that we can inform people that would make this stuff all go well? Okay, last slide, except the one with my email on it, which is the actual last slide. Uh, so how can you help? I think that there's this interesting, this is just like, I think that this industry is very ethically engaged and in many ways it can feel like people feel like they need to do the work themselves. So I know that a lot of people in this room are probably like engineers and researchers. And I think I think I, I would want to emphasize is you can be like really ethically engaged and that doesn't mean you need to take this whole burden on yourself. Like one thing you can also do is like advocate for this work to be done, like either in your company or just like anywhere where people are like, you know, in your company, in academia, or just that your company is like informed of this stuff. Um, but in general, helping doesn't necessarily have to mean taking on this massive burden of like learning an entire field yourself. Um, it can just mean like advocating for this work being done. At the moment, this is like a really small field and I would just like love to see more people working in it. Um, so I think adv advocacy is like really important, but I also think another thing is you can like technically inform people who are working in this. Like we have to work closely with a lot of the teams here and I think that's really useful. And I think that like policy and ethics work is like doing its best basically when it's like really technically informed. Um, and so if you find yourself working in a position where you're like a lot of the things that you're doing feel like they are important and they would benefit from this sort of work, like helping people who are working on it is like a really excellent way of helping. So it's just like not, it's not the only thing that you can do is like, spend half of your time doing the work that like I'm doing and the others on the team are doing. You can also like get people like us to do it. You know, we love it. Like, <laughs> and if you're interested in this, so thank you very much.